Chapter 10 I found Jeremiah today, told him about my dream. He looked scared at first, and then like he was in ecstasy. He said that he had been waiting for another sign, and this is what he had been waiting for. I guess he's been having visions of angels and demons speaking to him for years. I didn't know if he is crazy or not, but even if he is, his story would be something amazing to tell. He said he'd been on his knees for years, traveling everywhere, looking for answers as to why life is so full of sadness and darkness for so many people. He told me he could see that same darkness and sadness inside of me. He said my eyes were full of it to the brim. He said he could see how I had tried so long to fight against that darkness, but every time I win, it just comes back stronger. He's right about that, even if he is crazy. I saw Ray again tonight. We talked about normal stuff. I wanted to tell him about my dream and Jeremiah, but I just didn't. I couldn't. I don't think Ray would laugh at me or make fun. But for some reason, I just couldn't talk to him. Every time I tried, my mouth just wouldn't open and I'd change the conversation. I saw a man in my room tonight. He was there one minute and gone the next. It was like a shadow moving across the wall. But there was no one there to cast a shadow. It scared me. It's probably just my medications. Again, I should make an appointment to see the doctor. Not that I have the money. And ever since that night, I really have been feeling much better. Sorry, it's been a while since I wrote. I feel different, a lot different, better than I have in a long time. And my dreams are so amazing lately. Like I'm in another place, lots of dreams about that church. I wonder if it's a real place. It's like a door into heaven. Outside, it's always a storm. Inside, it's always light and peace. And I'm no longer scared when the light comes because I know it is good always and it takes my pain away. Better than any medication ever has. The light tells me such amazing things, things I don't understand. And Jeremiah says it's because I've been given a gift, a gift of prophecy that allows me to speak to the angels. He finds me every day to have me tell him the things I've learned in my dreams. Every night is different, a different bit of knowledge, things I could never have known in real life, stuff in the Bible I never even knew was there. Jeremiah says that the angel that visited him is the same one that's visiting me. His name means God will a lot, which basically means that God will allocate. He says it means that we are close to the end days and God is calling his chosen people out of the darkness, that God is granting a portion to those who believe. I don't know if I believe him, but it's fun to hear his stories. Here's an example. The light showed me Kansas City covered in snow. Each snowflake was a bit of light and that light fell from the sky. Some who touched it lit up on the inside with joy, but others who were touched by the snow burst into flames and turned to ash. Jeremiah said that this means that God's Spirit is going to be poured out on the chosen in this city, and that the bad things in life will be burned up, leaving only the good. When I asked him what bad things, he told me that there was a spiritual war being fought over the souls of men and that there are demons, and that there are angels. He says that the light I see in the church in my dreams is an angel, and the shadow that I see in my room is a demon. I saw it again tonight. It's out of the corner of my eye, hiding, just a little blacker than the darkness around it. But when I sleep, I know I'm safe. Sometimes... I hope that Jeremiah is wrong, and the end times and this war between angels and demons is just things he's made up. But I can feel that he isn't wrong. What if there are things we cannot see, 
that we couldn't handle seeing? What if it's all so horrible and so terrifying that our human minds literally couldn't handle seeing all that is real? I can see the shadow man now in the corner. He's watching me. Jeremiah said to pray for angels to come and protect me if I saw it again. But I don't believe in that stuff. At least, I used to not believe in that stuff. And now I'm not so sure. I still can't talk to Ray about this. I dreamt another dream. A little different than before. I was in my house, the one that I grew up in as a kid, and there was a stairway, the same stairway that I went up every night to go to bed. But for some reason in my dream, I was scared of it. I looked over my shoulder because I saw a light. It was the light I knew from the church. And when I saw it, I, I lost my fear. I walked up the dark stairway. My feet were bare. The floor was cold. I remember because the dream is more vivid and stamped on my memory than any real life memory I've ever had. The stair went on and on with rooms and hallways branching off at all these different landings. I kept trying to get to the top where I see my friend, the light, but behind me I can hear that someone's following me. Their footsteps are just short of the rhythm of my own, mimicking me like an echo of my footsteps on the stairs. When I turn to look, no one's there. I know it's the shadow man lurking behind me and the, the thing that Jeremiah calls a demon. So I keep trying to reach the top where the light is, where I'm going to be safe. But when I get to the top, the stairs end at the ceiling. The footsteps behind me stop when I stop, but I know he's still there, lurking, just behind the corner at the next landing down. But I can't go any further. I take a step down the stair, and another, and another, but I don't hear the steps echoing behind me like they did when I went up and then the light is gone and I'm alone in the dark with the shadow man and I'm terrified because I cannot see him I cannot hear him but I know he's there where's my friend the light I cannot go up because there's nowhere to go I cannot go down because I know he's there waiting for me so I open my mouth to scream but I can't I try again, but there's no sound, nothing, and I keep telling myself to wake up, wake up! And then I could feel myself lying in my bed in my room. I'm terrified to open my eyes, and when I try, I can't. All I can think is that Jeremiah told me to pray for an angel to rescue me, so I do so. I call out the prayer he taught me and my mouth will not speak, it will not move. I feel a heavy weight on my chest and it spreads out over my legs and my arms like something lying on top of me, pinning me to the mattress, and I force my eyes open. There's a black mist over my bed. My mouth is open and I cannot move it. I can see whirls of blue and purple coming out of me, being absorbed into that black mist, but I cannot scream. I cannot move. I will myself to cry out for help, to pray in my mind if I cannot pray with my voice. Angel of light, fill me with your power, with the spirit from on high. Protect me from the evil I see before me and from the devil which I cannot see. Open my eyes to the light of truth. Fight at my side and strengthen me, for I am a vessel of God's spirit. I said these words in my mind, but my mouth just contorted itself into other words, strange words, like a language I've never heard before. And while the voice was mine, it had a power behind it that was not mine, a power that was another's entirely. The blue and purple lights stopped swirling, and the black mist suddenly disappeared, but the weight that was holding my body down was still there, and I am still paralyzed. And the voice that was mine but wasn't mine said, 
Daughter, I have heard your cry and have come to answer your prayer. I shall be the power of God unto you and grant you your portion if you will renounce your sins and become one with the light of God. I shall guard you and protect you and be with you all the days of your life. And then I saw the light, the light from my dream, bright and steady, lighting up the entire room so that there were no shadows at all. It hung above me, becoming larger and larger until it was the only thing I could see. It engulfed me, spreading its warmth all the way through my body. I could feel myself relaxing and my mind drifting into that state right before sleep. The weight remained, pushing me down into the bed, even as I lost consciousness in that warm, wonderful flow of light. I wasn't sure I wanted to tell Jeremiah about this dream, but I did. He seeks me out now, wherever I am, and for some reason I can't resist him when he asks me questions about my visions, as he calls them. He knows I'm not sure about his mission from God, and I tease him about that all the time. He just takes it. He started a Bible study group on campus, and there are some others who are going on a regular basis. I haven't gone yet. I'm not like the rest of them. They aren't artists or free thinkers. I sound so pompous when I talk like that. I'm sure they're good people. Most people who are religious have good intentions at heart, but I can't seem to bring myself to go. Being around people is hard. Being around people who think I dress funny or that dirty jokes are bad just isn't my thing. I'd rather, I'd rather hang out with someone like Ray. Jeremiah would hate Ray. Ray with his pseudo-goth metalhead persona. Ray, who is obviously gay, but who won't openly admit it. Ray, who has refurbished an abandoned church so that he has enough room to display every piece of crap art that he can find in the place where he lives. You know, the crazy cat guy who lives in a shit part of town and drinks too much. I miss Ray. I think I will go to the bar tonight and hang out with the low lowlifes where I belong. I'd rather go sit in the quiet, in the crappy bar, than head into the sanitized environment I am sure Jeremiah has prepared for tonight. I didn't make it to the bar last night. Jeremiah and a female friend, follower, of his showed up at the doorstep as I was leaving and offered to walk with me to the fellowship meeting so I didn't get lost along the way. I couldn't figure out a way to refuse politely, so I went. And I meant to just head to the bar after the meeting was over, but I couldn't figure out how to excuse myself in a polite manner. Why do I have to be so damn polite? I hate hurting other people's feelings. I hate it. And at the same time, I hate being a wimp and being the kind person who always concedes to everyone else's wants instead of my own. But I do it anyway. It's so fucking stupid. It was like church, but smaller. And in some girl's apartment, I was a little wrong about my assumptions about the people who would be there. Some of them were like I said, but... A couple were people who had pretty obvious problems. They were getting out of bad relationships. They were recovering addicts. I have been around enough of those to know them when I see them. But even if I hadn't seen it, they were totally open about their problems. No one tried to hide them at all. But they blamed their problems on demons and devils, which was a little outside of my comfort level. One girl looked emaciated, almost skeletal. She told me how she had been delivered from demons of anorexia, which were suicide spirits and hallucination demons working in tandem to kill her slowly. She was so sweet and so sincerely in pain. 
Another girl told me how Jeremiah had prayed for an angel to come and help her out of an abusive relationship with her boyfriend. The boyfriend had left three days ago and hadn't returned or called. She was enthralled by Jeremiah and tried to be as close to him as she could at every moment of the meeting. Another guy told me how he had been delivered from Leviathan, which apparently is a demon of alcoholism, and in other drugs. Most of these people were in more dire straits than I had ever been. And yet, I still felt like an outsider. What's wrong with me? I felt like an outsider in a room full of people who were welcoming, friendly, open, and who I honestly felt superior to in most ways, which means I'm an asshole. So I stayed. We sang some songs, mostly old folksy stuff I had learned in church back home, and even a kid song with silly hand motions. Jeremiah taught from the Bible about how God calls out his people, how God is all light and in him is no darkness at all, and how we need to free ourselves from our formal lives and be a new creation in the light of Christ. And then he taught this weird verse about how Paul asks God to free him from this dead body. He told us to imagine ourselves strapped to a dead, rotting corpse for all eternity. He said that this is what it is like in the real world, the spiritual plane that we cannot see with our eyes, but that the angels and demons existed in. When we give in to that original sin in our blood, it's like having a rotting corpse tied to us. It makes us stink to God and all that is good. He said that the only way to remove it is to give ourselves wholly to righteousness, to live outside the world, to free ourselves of earthly attachments. It was pretty gross imagery for a church, but no one else there seemed to mind. They just kept smiling with their eyes shining, looking at Jeremiah like he was Jesus Christ himself. I don't know why they don't see what I see, that he's just a weird guy with some weird ideas. And again, maybe I should ask myself why I don't see what they see. Then he talked about the evils of pop culture, pornography, filth in music and television, specifically sex. He didn't seem at all concerned with violence. Why is it always that way? The same stuff I'd heard a million times in any of the churches I had attended as a kid. For some reason, they think if we don't look at it, we won't have bad thoughts. I never really got that. After all, didn't sin predate TV and mass media? Whatever. But then the really weird things started happening. Remember the other night when I prayed and all the weird words that weren't mine came out? Those people did that after the teaching. Jeremiah said he was moved by the Spirit to call upon people to speak in tongues, interpret, and prophesy. And they spoke like I did in the dream. Words that I'd never heard before flowed from their mouths like water. And it was their voice, but it wasn't their words. I don't remember the messages they spoke in English later. Mostly they just sounded like a parroting of what Jeremiah had just taught. But the sound of those words, not any language I had ever heard before. It was beautiful and terrifying. When I looked at Jeremiah, he looked at me like he knew what I knew. I had told him yesterday about the dream. He brought me here to show me this, to show me that I was the same as the rest that I was one of his chosen he was supposed to lead to bring light from into the darkness, to fight evil in man's lives. It was like he was looking into my soul. I didn't want him to see what was there under the surface, the depression, the self-loathing, the feelings of superiority over him and the others who were there, even the stories I was working on that would fall into the category of sin in his worldview. 
I didn't want to give up who I was to be one of these warriors for the light. But I had hated who I was for as long as I can remember. Why would I want to stay as I was? A voice in my head said to me, Amanda, you could be happy here. You could live life just as these people do, free from worry, free of doubt, knowing what is right and what is wrong, knowing only the good and forsaking the evil. I could feel that warmth again from the light. I could feel all of the tension between who I was and who I wanted to be just fade away. The voice spoke again. Know that I have brought you here for a purpose and that purpose is your highest good. Just let go. Let the darkness inside of you go. Let go of the demon within you. That scared me. That thought. That word. Demon. Darkness. Inside me. After that, I didn't want to be anywhere but there, surrounded by all those good people. I didn't want to go back to my apartment. I didn't want to go see Ray. I just wanted to stay there where the light was because that darkness was starting to scare me and the thought that it might be inside me was terrifying. <laughs>